and thanks for joining us again on Agenda 2030. I hope your week has been great. I am Toyin in Kamyang John. On today's episode, we will be bringing you highlights from the just concluded summit on the role of faith based organizations in contributing and enhancing agricultural revolution in Nigeria. This summit is put together by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs in partnership with the Development and Resource Center to specifically galvanize support and appeal to faith-based organizations to encourage citizens, especially the youth, to embrace sustainable agriculture so as to reduce high dependency on oil and importation of goods and to also help address the challenges of Nigeria's growing population. All these and more will be coming to you in a bit. Remember, you can always follow us on all our social media platforms. Do stay with us. Agenda 2030. As a successful framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper, and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals. Designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. In times past, before the discovery of oil in Nigeria, agriculture had been used as a major source of internal and foreign revenue generation. But over the years, there had been factors militating against the progress of the agricultural sector. In spite of the challenges, the agricultural sector remains the largest employer of labor and largest contributor to Nigeria's gross domestic product, GDP. Agriculture today still accounts for over 40% of the country's GDP, but abysmally low in generating foreign earnings through exports. The strides of the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari in agriculture are however seen by many as legendary. The successes recorded in the sector reflect the commitment of the government to diversify the economy. Among the steps taken by the government in this direction, the Anchor Bora Fund targeted at stimulating private sector full implementation in the agriculture sector is adjudged most effective and unprecedented. The plans and programs so far implemented are in tandem with the ideals of the Sustainable Development Goals and they are especially targeted at addressing concerns around Goal 1, No Poverty, Goal 2, Zero Hunger, Goal 3, Gender Equality, Goal 4, Quality Education, Goal 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, Goal 10, Reduced Inequalities, and Goal 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. It was against this backdrop and the need to deepen the implementation while sustaining the gains that a special recognition was recently accorded the faith-based organizations with the objective of enlisting their buy-in. These found expressions in the unique and special summit tagged Faith-Based Agreed Summit with the theme Sustainable Agricultural Revolution, the role of faith-based organizations, which is aimed at achieving a booming zero oil economy and consolidation of ERGP as a strategic instrument for sustainable development. The main objectives of the summit is to first engage FBOs as agents of growth and development, empower them with adequate information on opportunities and trends in the current agricultural policy drive to achieve sustainable development goals. In her remarks, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orilokwe Adefulure, maintained that due to the important role and influence the FBOs have on the society, their support will make the desired impact and achieve significant progress in achieving the SDGs by 2030. 
Orinokwe Adifilire, who also mentioned the number of programs and strategies her office has undertaken to give direction to the national commitment on SDGs, also made a passionate appeal to the FBOs for full inclusiveness in advocating for citizens' participation in agricultural revolution in Nigeria. She, however, reiterated the present administration's commitment to continue to explore meaningful ways and means of improving the lives of Nigerians through engagement and empowerment programs tied to agriculture. Undoubtedly, this meeting and activities, if fully implemented, will also have multiplier effect on other goals of sustainable development. I would like to appreciate the Development Training Resource Center for initiating this meeting and for the wonderful partnership which Goal 17 of SDG talks about. I am indeed inspired by the presence of our religious leader and community leaders and high respected dignitaries at this summit. This is no doubt a clear demonstration of our individual and collective commitment towards social economy development of Nigeria. As a government, we will continue to create enabling environment and avenues for our religious leaders and other stakeholders to offer leadership guidance as we aim to achieve inclusive government. At our office, Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, we are mandated to provide strategic leadership and guidance in the implementation of Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria. Since the adoption of the 17 Development Agenda in 2015 December, the Federal Government of Nigeria has demonstrated strong commitment in operationalizing the goals, the targets, and indicators across the country. It is pertinent to emphasize that SDG framework plan leave no one behind, as it is represents a universal call to action, to end poverty, to safeguard the planet, and to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. It is in this regard that we are committed to engaging religious leaders religious and community leaders, the private sector, the development partner to support the implementation of SDG in Nigeria. It is our desire for inclusive development. We recognize the role of faith-based organizations as integral part of the broader civil society. The faith-based organization by concept and practice tends to evolve from the development of faith communities conviction that they have a moral necessity to help those who are in need and to improve their livelihood. This summit, therefore, is specifically designed to galvanize support and commitments to our, from our religious leaders and faith-based organizations to drive sustainable agriculture. The SDGs' core areas such as food security, agriculture, energy, infrastructure development, industry, macroeconomic stability, and inclusive growth have been integrated into the National Economic and Recovery Growth Plan, which will be implemented up till 2020. While recognizing the, the positive contributions of pace-based organizations in the areas of poverty alleviation, the health, education, the health and education sectors, fostering peace and, recon and reconciliation, and other social services, we believe that engaging with you people in the agricultural sector will facilitate economic diversification. The summit, therefore, will provide the platform to simulate discussion and explore the strength of faith-based organizations in the agriculture sector. Represented by the Director of Agri Planning and Policy Coordination, Nasiru M. Adamu, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Aldoube, emphasized on the need for FBOs to see themselves as agents of transformation in the agri sector. The minister, while listing the interventions the federal government is taking to boost the agri sector, also emphasized the importance of the FBOs in the overall sensitization campaigns to their various places of worship, the effect of which he said will help address the challenges of feeding Nigeria's growing population. 
He said that the ministry is open to any prospective farmer or youth for grants or help. With this, the policy direction with some measures of achievement have been made uh, in the agricultural promotion policy implementation process. They include provision of 25% input subsidy contribution to farmers under the private, privately managed growth enhancement support scheme. This is a scheme whereby if you need a small tiller and it costs maybe 20,000 naira, so all you need to do is go and pay 20% of that. Your state government should shoulder the responsibility of that 20% and the remaining will be shouldered by the federal government. So by that is reducing the cost to farmer, average cost to farmer. Uh, in addition, a so soil fertility map and side crop specific uh, uh, side crop stock specific fertilizer formulation has been developed for all the 36 states and the federal capital territory to appropriately aid crop production and maximize it in every locality. In addition to that, the land clearing intervention at various locations in the country to boost crop output and ensure cluster of agricultural products in a particular location that will encourage high uh, premium of high value. So even the land is being prepared by government. We are moving in there. It's a policy in play that we move in there. You prepare the land for you through the, uh, a program so that at the end of the day, the cost of production will be less and then the level of uh, your production will go up. The Chief Executive of Development and Training Resource Center, the implementing partner of the summit, Prince Shegun Obayendo, also speaking on the trust of the meeting, described the permanence of the FBOs even when governments come and go as one of the standout quality to the quest. The government of Nigeria is always talking of diversification of the economy. I grew up to be hearing this, diversification of the economy, and they've tried. In fairness, they've tried. I remember Operation Feed the Nation, 1976 to thereabout. What did we achieve? Immediately, the, the, the government of the day left. What happened? We came up with Green Revolution. Immediately, that government left. What happened? We came up with Structural Adjustment Program. Immediately, the government left. What happened? We came again with NEETS, National Economic Empowerment Development Strategies. Immediately, the government left. What happened? We came out also with a um, seven-point agenda. A group of people that has what I call permanent characteristics, as in they are permanent. No matter the government, no matter the party, this set of people are permanent in our characteristics. Then why can't we reach out to them? So that if the government leaves, they are always there. They will be able to deliver. They will be able to carry on to the next uh, level. And in fairness, I am not patronizing you, but I can say without any fear of contradiction that I know so many institutions established by faith-based organizations. Is it in education? Is it in health? Is it in microfinance? And it has been, the hallmark has been that of sincerity. The hallmark has been that of credibility. The hallmark has been that of being able to sustain it and then take it to the, to the next level. Representatives of some faith-based organizations present at the summit agreed that collective effort will drive home the aims and targets of the summit. They also believe that the initiative will reduce unemployment and curtail particularly youth restiveness. They promise to take the message to their various places of worship in a bid to make the desired impact. In the empowerment of our people, we believe that this initiative of diversifying the economy through agriculture will go a long way in minimizing crisis between farmers and others. It will also boost agricultural revolution. On the matter of faith-based organizations, relevance, both Christians and Muslims can play critical roles on payback in terms of agricultural loans. If I issue in consent on collaboration with them, in concrete example, it is evident that officiating priests or ministers 
are best managers of tithes in the church. Such loans can be managed by them because of the moral obligations and trust on their religious priest. The same is applicable to Islam because imams and religious leaders are also regarded the best managers, especially in the distribution of zakat to the grassroots. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me express my personal lamentation that the nation failure in agricultural practices and revolution reflect the impetus in the prudent utilization of human and material resources. Good, sound economy and welfare policies. It is evident that there is no connection between the Fed based uh, organization impute in agricultural practices and policy trust in Nigeria as in the agricultural yesteryears. It is also an evident that Fed based organization assist the vulnerable when affected on humanitarian strategies. The Lord Almighty God has blessed us with fertile ground in this country. There's no gain said about that. From Sokoto to Calabar, Meduguri to Lagos, we have land for arable and cash crops. And when we look at the history of Nigeria, we will not in Egypt forget the granite pyramid in the north, the cocoa pyramid, uh, pyramid in the southwest, if you remember, then the oil power and rubber in the east before the discovery of petroleum in the soil of Nigeria. What was done before, I believe, can be done again. Now, bringing the faith-based organizations into the picture is very necessary and sufficient for success. Many times we do forget the five basic institutions that are necessary for a sustainable society. And for any society to be peaceful, to be balanced and sustainable, the five basic institutions, none of them should be relegated to the background. They are the family, two, the economic institution, the educational institution for the acculturation of the children, the political institution, and last but not the least, the religious institution. Other speakers at the summit also loaned their advice and support. Israel, as you know, is not blessed like Nigeria and other countries with natural resources. We don't have mines, we don't have oil, we don't have gas, we don't have you know, gold, diamonds. But Israel is coming, you know, presenting two things. First of all, when it was established about 70 years ago, a little bit than, more than 70 years ago, the need to exist and also knowledge. That's what Israel represents. And throughout the years, you know, the desire to survive and to build the country pushed it to innovate, to create, to produce, to develop technology and other tools and means in order to make food available for everybody. That's why today, 70 years since Israel was established, our culture, agriculture became, and it is in fact, one of the best in the world when it comes to technology, when it comes to production, in all fields, from poultry to fisheries. Sustainable and inclusive agricultural growth is vital to achieve both SDG 1, that is on poverty, as well as SDG 2 on hunger. And this also influences many other goals of the UN SDGs. Thus, all stakeholders need to adopt national agricultural policies and investment plans that focus not only on agricultural sector development, but also on poverty, hunger, resilience, climate change, and deforestation. The immediate past chair of the African Union and President of the Republic of Guinea, Mr. Alpha Conte, states that food insecurity and nutrition, like injustice, breed dissatisfaction and conflict, 
and the vicious cycles that follows. The FAO of the UN is working with the federal and state ministries of agriculture and rural development, as well as other partners, to support the government's initiative to achieve zero hunger and food sufficiency for the people of Nigeria. In doing this, we strategically engage key stakeholders in the agricultural sector to implement interventions that will improve the quality of seeds, crop yield, livestock, aquaculture, and the overall annual food production and output. Participants at the event believe that the FBOs may have the key to unlock the massive public buy-in needed to get the people back to agriculture. A critical SWOT analysis of the faith-based organizations is hugely revealing on the untapped resources therein. The Office of the Senior Special Advisor to the President on Sustainable Development Goals deemed it expedient to declassify the FBOs as squarely a spiritual sector rather than indisputable agents of change and development. This is against the adjudged quantum of development the FBOs have engendered in Nigeria over the years. Agenda 2030. As a successor framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals. Designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. Nigeria will continue to support the United Nations in all its efforts, including the attainment of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I thank you. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. I am Guillaume Delalande from the OECD. You're watching Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. And that's it on this week's episode. Next week promises to be more insightful and interesting. I am Toyin Nkamiang John. See you again. Bye.